Good evening, everyone. This is Jeff at the Vintage Nest here in downtown Mount Holly. Um, tonight, we're going to, I'm going to just demonstrate how you can refresh a little home decor item. I know we're coming up quick into the holiday season, and there may be a few things around your house that you would like to just give it a new lift, facelift. So I have this guy right here. Um, it's kind of worn. I don't know if you can see. It's just discolored in various places. And all I'm going to do is use any Sloan chalk paint to start to refresh this. One of the beauties of any Sloan's chalk paint is that it can paint a lot of different surfaces from slick to um, very matte. Obviously, a slick surface, you may want to use a little fine grit sandpaper. And kind of scuff it up a little bit just so the paint has something to adhere to so um so anyway this little project is um it only take a few minutes and and this type of a project you can just use one of the small project size um paint so you don't have to buy a whole liter of paint in order to um to refresh say a lamp or this i'm not sure if this was like a big probably an umbrella stand i'm probably gonna put flowers in it so um anyway i'm trying to get my laptop to bring the live up as well it's not being agreeable right now so anyway because i have a really hard time seeing the um the small screen on the iphone from any distance at all so but anyway, if you if you would just give me a like or heart, whatever, just to let me know that I'm working tonight. Um, anyway, and of course, we always like to see your comments, your ideas, your thoughts. So feel free to comment. If I can't see them tonight, I will go back later and respond to those as well. Um, and if you feel so inclined, share it. That's how small businesses really um kind of get the word out. It's kind of hard the other way. Social media is kind of a way to way for us to do that. So I appreciate any um, any of those type of things that you feel inclined to do. So anyway, all I'm going to do is use the um, oval brush. This brush is awesome for painting something like this. This is a woven textured um, surface. So I'm just going to kind of swirl it in and it really covers or helps the paint get down in those little crevices and we get good coverage. Now, I this the finish I'm working on, I've already done, uh, we're not doing the whole thing tonight because I've already done three sides. Because I didn't think you wanted to watch me do the entire thing. I just This really is just to give you an idea of how quick and simple this is. So I'm just brushing on the paint. As you know, notice, I'm not really that concerned with um, the direction that I'm painting. I am pushing the paint out. Um, so I'm not leaving it in clumps anywhere. I'm, and I'm kind of painting on the tips of my brush. Um, it reduces some of the brush strokes. And in this particular piece, it has a lot of texture, so you don't see much of any brush strokes anyway. Not that brush strokes are bad. In fact, most finishes that I work on, I'm trying to create brush strokes. And, and a lot of people are kind of surprised because evidently somewhere along the line, brush strokes on a piece of furniture is somehow bad, but it's not. It really creates, with her thick paint, it creates places for wax, especially um, if you're using the colored waxes um, to kind of have a place to grab a hold to. So in this one, I am. You probably already see one side of it. I'm not very good at keeping a secret, I guess. But anyway, this goes fairly quickly. And I'm just using the tips of my brush. I'm not really blobbing the paint on, just really the tips and the paint and brushing it on. Sorry, I don't have to turn this so I can see if I've missed any glaring spots now what this is one of my favorite finishes um the color i'm using tonight is called hun floor that's the way i pronounce it i don't know if that's the way it's officially pronounced 
There we go. And then there's a little top ledge that I want to paint as well. So anyway. And we have all of these supplies available here at the shop. Um, like I said, I'm using this one. I think is the medium oval brush. And now I'm going to let this dry. And through the magic of Facebook Lives, this side's ready to be waxed. Um, with this particular finish, I'm just using the white, the chalk paint white wax. And the any Sloan wax brush. And I'm not really, like, I'm gonna dab it in. You still have quite a bit of wax on the brush. I'm gonna kind of scrape it off on the edges. I have not clear waxed this. Clear waxing provides a buffer. I actually want the um, white wax to kind of stain this and create this kind of grayish look. And I'm just lightly brushing it on. Apply enough pressure to move the wax around. But not enough to like, feel like I'm doing a workout or a CrossFit workout. This is not the point of this. And I'm trying to get this a little bit even. As you can see, it's already making a fairly dramatic, dramatic, not traumatic, dramatic change in the color of the, of the surface. And I don't know if you remember, but all of the, um, what looked like damage to this piece has disappeared. Because most of it was kind of a surfacey discoloration where it looked like it had been scraped or dented somehow. Not dented, but um, banged up maybe. Kind of lived a rough life before this. But you can paint so many things in your home. So you just look around with something, you know, you just don't really care for the color and you're thinking about letting it go. Think about updating it first. It's pretty quick, pretty simple. And this. So now I prefer and I like shop tiles. And set. So I'm going to wipe off the excess wax, the shop tile. Again, I'm just applying enough pressure to move the tile across the surface. And you see I'm collecting up wax, the excess wax. Now I'm going to move into the center section. You also feel the surface and it feels dry to touch. It doesn't feel tacky or um, sticky or anything like that. I'm trying to get into those corners. I'm trying to do this so that you can see it as well. It's um, a challenge <laughs> at best. But anyway, hopefully you're getting the idea. The beauty of all this textured inlay in this panel here is the fact, or inlay panel, that it's got tons and tons of places for um, the wax to collect. Obviously, we don't want a ton of it collecting because we want a bit to wipe it out. We don't want to have a lot of it in there where it's not going to cure. So then I'm going to use my towel, I'm going to wipe out. If you feel like there's some areas that possibly have too much wax in them, what I do is I take a clean brush and I'll go back and try to pull the wax out with a clean brush. I think that's good and even. What do you guys think? I can see people are commenting, I apologize, I cannot see in my computer that I had right here beside me is not pulling up my Facebook page. 
guess that's one of the challenges of being in your mid 50s. Eyesight is not what it used to be, that is for sure. So, but thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. And here we go. So this side is pretty much finished. I keep seeing little places I want just, just to apply a little bit more wax. So like in this area, I got a little bit too much. So I have a clean brush and I'm just gonna use it to kind of massage that wax in to the piece. Now I'm using um, just one of my paint brushes that you could use, you could use pretty much any brush you choose. Um, sometimes when I'm working on a very detailed card piece, I'll use just a chip brush just to go in there and pull out any excess wax. I did not get this rim or the top. So again, this is, this is my new piece, completely refreshed. There we go. Of course, this side's still drying. I'll complete that tomorrow. So the reason I love this Han Floor, it's Han Floor, um, which is her um, dark brown color. And I just use white wax directly onto the um, dried paint surface. And what that's doing is, is more or less staining the paint. And you're getting a lot. If you didn't want quite this much white, you can use the clear wax as a base. And then you'll be able to move the wax around, the white wax around, wipe off more, and you'll see more of the brown finish. Now, like I said, I thought this this was an umbrella stand, but I want to put flowers in it, and I don't really have it set up, but I'm kind of thinking just some big florals in this would be really awesome. Of course, I need more. But anyway, this is a great, quick way to update something in your home, especially getting ready for the holidays. Um, not only t this probably won't even take 30 minutes to complete. Well, you know, 15 or so minutes to paint, let it dry, 15, 20 minutes to wax it at most. And it keeps um, something that's, you know, you just paint it any color you choose to match your home decor. So look around the house, things that are kind of bothering you, just come out and buy a little sample size. You know, this, that's more than enough to paint this size project or lamps or picture frames, mirror frames, things of that nature. So anyway, I hope this was very, very helpful. Um, again, we do quite a few lives. So if you go to the Vintage Nest page, you can just scroll down and see the lives we've done. Um, we probably wanna do another one in a couple of days. I think I have a chair, a little Duncan Fife chair I want to um, refresh for the holidays, I'm thinking about using it at our holiday open house, which is November 24th. Anyway, it's a Sunday before Thanksgiving, so. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. Again, Han Floor Wax, uh, Han Floor Paint, excuse me, any Sloan chalk paint, Han Floor, the white wax. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really greatly appreciate if you share our video. Thank you for commenting. And we'll see you probably tomorrow live. We have some exciting things we're working on tomorrow. So we'll just probably go a couple times live tomorrow um, to show you some things that we're working on. Anyway, y'all have a great evening and we'll see y'all later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.